In this video, I'm gonna show you three signs that you're doing drone mapping wrong. And more importantly, how to fix each one of these things so that your data holds up in the real world. If you don't know me, my name is David Young and I have a company called Drone Launch Academy. I've been in the drone industry for 10 years now and I've been pretty involved in drone mapping for the last five. I've gone deep on mapping accuracy, survey control, RTK and PPK, and what it takes to deliver trustworthy data to surveyors, civil engineers, and construction teams. I've worked with some of the best drone manufacturers in the world when it comes to mapping and surveying. I've hired some of the best drone mapping experts in the world to teach in our training programs, and some of the biggest companies in the world are our customers in our drone training programs. And I hear over and over again what drone operators continue to get wrong when it comes to drone mapping. So if you've been trying to get good at drone mapping but don't really know where to start, or you've been doing some drone mapping work but your data gets questioned by surveyors and engineers, or if you have ever heard, this drone model doesn't really line up with any of our existing plans or data, then this video is for you. With that, let's dive into sign number one that you are doing drone mapping wrong. Sign number one, you don't understand geodesy or know how to work with different coordinate systems. Here is a fact that kind of sucks. You can set up and fly a perfect drone mapping mission. You can collect all of the right images. You can process it perfectly and still deliver data that is technically wrong for your client if you have not aligned your data in the coordinate system that your customer actually uses. And that is what geodesy is for. Now, several years ago, I had never even heard of the word geodesy, so I'm guessing many of you watching this have not either, but the Oxford Dictionary definition of geodesy is technically the branch of mathematics dealing with the shape and area of the earth or large portions of it. Another definition from the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, they say that geodesy is the science of accurately measuring and understanding the earth's geometric shape, orientation in space, and gravity field. Essentially, it's the entire backbone and the foundation that makes surveying or defining accurate places on the earth even possible. And that's what you're doing when you're creating drone maps and models. You're trying to get a digital representation of some part of the earth or what is on the earth within some area and be able to describe where on the earth that thing actually is, both horizontally, so think you know north, south, east, west, and be able to describe it vertically. So what is the height or the elevation of some place or object. And it is hard to do this because the Earth is not perfectly round. It's not a perfect shape of any kind, really. Even sea level is not a consistent height across the world. So if that's true, how in the world can you tell someone where something is down to the centimeter if the Earth is just a big blob with no common reference point? Well, you have to have some type of generally accepted framework to communicate in, and that is what geodesy is for. So professionals in the geodesy field have developed things called datums, reference frames, and coordinate systems to give people a common system to refer to locations in an easier to use way. Probably the most common coordinate system that you're familiar with is latitude and longitude. You probably learned that in school. And this is based on the reference system called WGS84. That is what your GPS in your phone uses and every other GPS system uses you know, from satellites to determine your position. It's a way to describe locations on the earth. But the problem is that WGS84 isn't the best for describing points and heights in more like localized areas or projects that are happening with construction, things like that. So often something called a projection is used. And if you use the wrong one of those, all of your data will be off and will essentially be useless. And this can get super sciencey and complicated, so I'm not gonna go bore you to death with all the details, but I wanna take a look at an actual example together that I've seen before. So let's say that there is a new construction project that is happening. Someone's gonna go out and build a new housing community. Uh, the developers decide to purchase some raw land, maybe like an open field. Well, someone on that construction team is gonna create a computer model of what the ground needs to look like before they start building all the houses. Because of course you can't just go in there and start building structures on undeveloped land uh, that's uneven, runs all over sort of different directions. You need to carve out the base for the roads. You need to think about drainage and water runoff. You need to have flat plots of land where the houses and buildings are actually gonna go. So someone literally sits down at a computer and creates a computer generated model of what that finished land looks like. Baked into that model is coordinate system information. It describes where all the points and the lines in that computer model are on the actual earth. Now that the construction team knows what the finished ground needs to look like when it's all done, the next thing they need to know is what it looks like now, today. So that way they can compare and figure out how much dirt needs to be moved. They need to know where to take dirt from and where to move dirt to. And this all needs to be done with a lot of precision. 
So often they have someone go out there with a drone, capture a ton of drone images from overhead, and then turn that into a digitized map or model of what the ground is like today at that moment. And that drone model also has some coordinate system information baked into it. Every time you take a picture with your drone, it stamps the GPS coordinates on there. Now, if the coordinate system information that you used in your drone model and the settings that you had were different from the coordinate system information used in the design model, they are not gonna line up. And then when they're brought together in the computer to compare and do all those calculations, it's essentially gonna be worthless because they're not going to line up in the same area. I've seen an example of where the drone model was loaded into the computer and it literally showed up on the wrong side of the street apart from the design model. So it was just, they didn't know what was going on. Like, we can't even use this. If you want to be a helpful and in-demand person in drone mapping, here are some things that you need to know. Number one, know your datum and reference frame. Are you in WGS84, NAD83? which realization and epic that basically means which version of this are you in and that matters more than most people realize number two is know your projection is your client working in a state plane coordinate system or utm uh, and if they start saying stuff like northings and eastings you know that your latitude and longitude ortho mosaic map that you might have won't cut it without being properly transformed into the right coordinate system projection. And number three would be know your height system. Ellipsoidal heights, as they're called, from a GNSS receiver are not the same as orthometric heights, which are often in a datum uh, like NAVD88. Now, if you don't know what all these mean, that's okay. I would do some more research outside of this, but if you want to do this right, you got to know sort of what these terms mean and what it is. If you don't handle the vertical part of your map properly, all the heights, you could be off by dozens of feet, even if your horizontal accuracy, so north, south, east, west, look just fine. One time I did a mapper model and the north, south, east, west, you know, the horizontal, everything looked really nice, was lining up great when I looked straight down. But when we got a side view and we looked at the heights, I was off by over 200 feet because we didn't have something that is gonna be talked about in the next part of this video. And my last recommendation is that you need to make sure that you've confirmed your client's coordinate requirements up front. You need to ask for these things. So for the horizontal, you wanna ask for the datum, uh, a realization or epic, uh, if they're using some type of projection, and you wanna ask for something called an EPSG code if they have it. For vertical positions, you're gonna want the datum and the geoid model if they are using a specific one. And then you wanna ask if they have any site calibration or local grid coordinates or system that is being used, because that will impact um, how they implement your data. Then when you're processing drone data, you need to make sure that all of this is set accurately in the software that you're using. So a quick note, I want to give you something. If you want to learn more about Geodesy, there's a freebie that I'm gonna give you. I've unlocked the entire intro to Geodesy section of one of our courses called Geodesy for Drone Surveying. This course is taught by a Geodesy legend, Dave Doyle. Dave spent over 40 years with the National Geodetic Survey. He's got an amazing mustache and he was the chief geodetic surveyor. So he literally helped create a lot of the things that I just talked to you about, like datums, reference frames, all those things. And in that Geodesy for Drone Surveying course, Dave breaks down concepts like coordinate systems, geoids, projections, and everything else you need to know about Geodesy for drone mapping in a way that's simple and practical. So if you want these five free lessons, just find the link down below in the description and you can get access to those. On to sign number two that you're doing drone mapping wrong. You don't know how to validate your accuracy. What happens when you spend some time trying to get a nice clean drone model captured for a surveyor engineer, and then you send the data over to them and they ask, hey, how accurate is this? And how do you know that this model is accurate? What's your answer? Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty accurate. That's not gonna cut it. Also, do you know if they're talking about relative accuracy or absolute accuracy? If it's absolute accuracy, as in how accurate is this map aligned to real world coordinates on the earth, do you know how to figure that out? Can you give them some type of range or an actual number? This is where a lot of drone newbies just fall flat on their face, but that does not have to be you, all right? There are a few things that you need to know about in order to do this, so I'm gonna talk through them. Number one is ground control points, or GCPs for short. Number two is check shots, and then something called root mean square error, or RMSE. So first off, ground control points or GCPs. These are specific points or targets that show up in your drone mapping images. Um, and for these points, you have exact coordinate and height information. So either you or a survey crew has gone out there with some GNSS receivers and figured out a very accurate coordinate for that spot. Then you take that information and you feed it into the software when you're in the data processing stage of doing your mapping. Now that allows the software to place your map exactly where it needs to go on the earth, but it's never perfect. So this is where check shots come in. All right, so number two is check shots. Check shots are essentially done the same way as GCPs. You go out there, you get a specific point in the map and you get a coordinate for it with your nice GNSS equipment. 
But for these points, you don't feed them into the software to help you fit your map to the actual coordinates on the Earth, right, to get it in the right place. They are simply just a reference point. And what the software will do is it will take the check shot location, so the coordinates you got for that with your nice GNSS receiver, and it will compare that point to what your drone map is saying about that location, and then it will give you a difference or an error. So now onto number three, which is root mean square error, or RMSE. This is a measure of all of those errors that we talked about with our check shots combined to give you a sense of how accurate uh, your map and total model is compared to the coordinates that were measured by your nice GNSS equipment, right? It's validating it against some other type of outside information other than your model. If you wanna dive deep into this topic about RMSC and ground control points and check shots, I did a full walkthrough video on one of these types of accuracy reports with a licensed surveyor. So I will link it somewhere up in this corner of the video if you wanna check that out. So if you wanna be able to articulate the accuracy of your work, you need to know how to correctly use GCPs, check shots, and get the RMSC of your model. All right, sign number three that you're doing mapping wrong is that you don't know how your end user is actually using the data you're giving them. This is the business end of mapping. So a high quality model that doesn't fit an engineer's workflow is essentially ends up just being a useless pretty picture. So what I want you to do is to ask these three questions before you fly. Number one, what decisions will this data drive? So like, is it quantity takeoffs, progress volumes? Are you doing some as-built checks? Are you extracting some planimetric information? You know, what is happening? Number two is what file formats and coordinate systems do they need? So are they gonna be needing a GeoTIFF when you're done or some type of LAS file or OBJ file, DXF file? There's all these different file formats that they could need uh, from the data that you're getting. And then number three, what accuracy do they require and how are they gonna test it? You know, are they using specific checkpoints that they're gonna give to you? Are they gonna take this information and overlay it in CAD? Those answers will change the job for you. If they're doing volumes every two weeks, uh, you know, want consistent flight geometry and a similar sun angle time of day and the whatever settings that you had on your camera will probably matter. They wanna be comparable surfaces. If they're doing something like planimetric mapping, they may care about more about like edge clarity, and ground sampling distance. Again, it helps you know what to focus on in your map. If they're integrating with some existing survey control, you're gonna need their control file, or you may need a calibration or a site localization file. Uh, if they're on state plane coordinates, you need to make sure that your deliverables reflect that in what you're giving them. This is where you go from just a drone operator and someone who can just get out there and take some photos and throw some stuff into some software to an actual trusted geospatial partner. You have to make sure that you understand how the information that you are putting together is gonna to be used by the person you're delivering it to. It's the only way to make sure that it actually fits what they're doing and what they need. I know this sounds a little obvious, but I've seen time and time again where I'm talking to a drone pilot who's in the middle of working on a mapping project and I just, I'm curious, so I ask them, hey, you know, what do they use this information for? What are they doing with it? And they'll just say, eh, I don't really know. They just wanted me to get an ortho once a month and send it to the project manager. They just don't know anything beyond that. And you gotta dig deeper than that. Ask more questions, be curious, have a desire to help. You know, if you do the bare minimum, you should just expect the bare minimum. You gotta dig in and be helpful to them. So if you like drone mapping and modeling and you wanna get into more of the advanced side of things, I put together a free training that's about 30 to 40 minutes long, all on this exact topic. So if you wanna check that out, I put a link down below to get access to it. All right, if this video has been helpful to you, give it a like and then subscribe to our channel to get more stuff like this. Also, shoot me a comment below. Has any of this stuff that I've mentioned in this video ever come up for you on a job or have you experienced any of that? I'd love to hear about it. All right, see you on the next one.